Hello, I'm John McMurray from the University of Glasgow in the United Kingdom and I'm the principal investigator of the Dapagliflozin in Heart Failure with Reduced Dejection Fraction Trial, DAP-AHF. And I'll give you a short summary of the design and principal findings of the DAP-AHF trial. So we've known for some time that sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors, SGLT2 inhibitors, can prevent the development of heart failure in patients with type 2 diabetes. What we didn't know is whether or not SGLT2 inhibitors might be a treatment for patients with established heart failure. There's also some experimental evidence that these drugs may have benefits that are independent of glucose lowering and therefore another interesting question was whether or not they might be a useful treatment for patients with heart failure who do not have diabetes. Therefore we conducted the DAP-AHF trial in which we randomized patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction to either dapagliflozin 10 mg once daily or placebo and importantly, we randomised patients with HEF-REF, both with and without diabetes. The design of our trial was very straightforward. We enrolled typical HEF-REF patients. They had to have a, an ejection fraction uh, below 40% and they had to have a modest elevation in natriuretic peptides. We had very few exclusion criteria the two principal exclusion criteria were an estimated glomerular filtration rate of less than 30 and a systolic blood pressure of less than 95 millimetres of mercury. We enrolled 4,744 patients. We followed them for a median of 18.2 months. They were very well treated with contemporary pharmacological therapy, including a beta blocker in 96% of patients a renin angiotensin system blocker in 94% of patients and a mineralic corticoid receptor antagonist and aldosterone receptor antagonist in 71% of patients. Our primary endpoint was a composite of a worsening heart failure event or cardiovascular mortality. We saw a 26% relative risk reduction in the primary composite endpoint that was a highly st statistically significant benefit. The number needed to treat to prevent one event over the 18 months of median follow-up was 21. Both of the components of that composite outcome were also individually reduced significantly. So there was a 30% reduction in a worsening heart failure event. Most of those events were in fact heart failure hospitalizations, heart failure hospitalization was reduced by 30% and there was a significant 18% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. We had a number of secondary endpoints but I'll just mention two of those. The first is patient reported symptoms measured using the Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire. There was an overall improvement with dapagliflozin that was statistically significant. More patients in the dapagliflozin group had a clinically meaningful improvement in symptoms. Fewer patients in the dapagliflozin group had a clinically important deterioration in symptoms. The other secondary outcome I will mention because of its importance is all-cause mortality and we saw a statistically significant 17% reduction in all-cause mortality. We were, of course, uh, concerned about safety and tolerability. Uh, we did not find that any adverse event was more common in the dapagliflozin group than in the placebo group. Dapagliflozin was very well tolerated. Only 10.7% of patients discontinued study drug over the course of the study, that was the same proportion approximately as in the placebo group. Maybe one last and critically important point to make is that the benefit that we saw for the primary outcome was identical 
in patients with diabetes and in HEFREF patients without diabetes. In other words, this drug was effective even in heart failure patients who were not diabetic. So in summary and conclusion, we felt that we had observed significant clinically important reductions in worsening heart failure events and in cardiovascular mortality and in addition we saw an improvement in patient symptoms. These benefits were seen in all the major subgroups we examined and in particular patients who were not diabetic. Dapagliflozin was well tolerated and was infrequently discontinued. So in summary we believe that we've identified a completely new approach to the treatment of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. This is a drug that doesn't act in the way that most of our existing heart failure therapies act, i.e. through neurohumeral modulation. This treatment of course is available for diabetic patients today and the guidelines recommend its use in diabetic patients so of course patients with heart failure and diabetes could be treated anytime with uh, this particular agent. The non-diabetic subgroup of patients, of course, we can't advocate using dapagliflozin in those individuals yet. The drug is not labelled for use in non-diabetics. That has to undergo regulatory review and, of course, we have to wait for the guideline recommendations.